Hey, what's going on tech fans? Good morning and welcome back once again to Tech and Amar. We have a brand new video launch from the people over at AMD. I know that some people out there are going to be disappointed because this isn't Vega, but Vega will be here. It just will be here on quarter one of 2018. This is basically a Polaris refresh. That's right. The technology behind it is the Polaris 20. So it's brand new in some ways, but a refresh and others because a lot of things in this card you're gonna see are kind of the same things that we saw in the 470 and 480. Now the 580, which I have here in my hands, this is the new top of the line dog from the people over at AMD. Now, like I said, I know many people out there were expecting Vega, but this just isn't Vega. So please don't beat me up for that. I'm not the one releasing the card. But first up, we have a power color, pretty much the golden sample, as you guys can see, of the brand new RX 580. Pretty nice card, gonna come to market probably anywhere between $229 and $259, depending on where you get it. I wasn't able to actually find and nail down the exact price on this particular card. But with that said, here it is. So let's jump in real quick. Let's check out the card itself, the specs, the scores, and then talk about this card and see at the end of the day, is it worth buying a brand new card or keeping your old card? Let's jump in. All right, folks, so here we have it. The power color, Red Devil RX 580. And you guys can see this thing permeates the red and black theme, which I think is cool because those are the themes that AMD is known for. So I think it's cool to keep the card that color. Why make it some other weird color? It just in my book doesn't matter. Now, the two fans on top, they may look like normal fans, but they actually have two ball bearings inside of them to make them last longer and actually has 20% more efficiency than your standard fans. The design also looks pretty cool. You guys can see all all of the heat fins underneath that, all that aluminum stuff keeping this card cool. And just all in all, I think it looks pretty doggone badass. Now taking a look at the rear of the card, you guys can once again see lots of those aluminum heat fans. You can also see the power connector for the fans there as well. Now it's kind of hard to see since the card has its shroud and everything on it, but underneath there, there are five heat pipes along with all those aluminum heat fans to help dissipate all that heat away from your card and keep it running cool. Taking a look at the bottom of the card, you guys can clearly see those heat pipes I was talking about earlier. Now taking a look at the top of the card, on the very far left on the top, you guys can see there's a BIOS switch. This is a switch between the dual BIOS, so if you burn one out when you're trying to overclock, you can switch back to the other one, keep up and going, and then flash the other one so you can be up and going with that one as well. Now if we move over a little bit more to the right, there's also an RGB button. This turns on or turns off your RGB lighting. Next to that are the two power connectors. This card requires a single six pin and a single eight pin power connector. And AMD recommends that you use a minimum of a 600 watt power supply to power this beast. And last but not least, let's check out those outputs. There's a single DVI-D connection, three display ports, and a single HDMI connection. The display port is 1.4 and the HDMI is 2.0B. Now on the back plate, we once again see the seal of Solomon on here. And it's very tough and rugged to smack our hands on. You know, it's not gonna break, it's durable, it could probably even kill a cameraman. What? No, we won't go there. All right, so that's what the card looks like. Now let's check out the specs. The RX 580 features 2,304 stream processors, 144 TMUs, and 32 ROPs. It has eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory and a 256-bit memory interface. And like I said before, the chipset behind this is the Polaris 20 XTX. And just like the RX 480, the RX 580 is made in the 14 nanometer FinFET process. Now, for those wondering, what is the size of this card? Well, in inches, the card is 9.5 inches long and five inches high and features a dual slot design. The Red Devil RX 580 comes overclocked right out of the box with a base clock of 1340 megahertz and a boost clock of 1425. So now that we've got past that, let's talk about the test system and the reason that I use the test system that I did. Now, most of the time when I test video cards, I usually test on a high-end Intel system. That's just the way we've always been doing things around here. But I figure let's do something different this time. Since this card is pretty much in the budget range of less than $300, I'm sure people aren't gonna wanna see it tested with a $500 CPU, $600 CPU. So why not use something that's in that range? So we chose to use our producer system with the 1600X in it. If you guys want more information about that system, we'll have a link down below. But basically, it's a liquid cooled system, features the H110 cooler by Corsair. Um, that's pretty much the system. If you guys want all more details about that, I want to ramble on about that in this video, you guys can check that out. But I pretty much thought that this system, being that you could put it on a B350 and there's not too much differences between the chipsets, you could build your own system around this very, very cheaply and then put this card in it and be good to go. And we've seen that if you overclock, 
The 16X, you can almost get the same performance that you're getting on a 1700X and an 1800X. So why buy those expensive CPUs when you get the same performance on the AMD platform with the 1600X? But with that said, let's jump in, let's rock out to the benchmark song and check out what this card does against the competition. So there you have it, the RX 580 in all of its glory. So I'm kind of a little bit kind of weird on this card. I mean, yes, it is faster than the 480 and you guys can see it even beats an overclock 1060 and a lot of tests. But the thing about this card that really trips me out the most though, is how much power it takes to power this damn card. I mean, it's got the same recommendation for a power supply as a 1080 Ti. And that's just really crazy. Like when I went to go build my crossfire system and put this stuff in, I put the cards in and went, holy shit, I'm gonna have to get a whole new power supply to put this in here. Requires a lot of power. And that to me is kind of the downfall of the card. But something that's good about the card, however, is you guys can see out of all the tests that we ran, this card runs the coolest out of them all. So that means there's gonna be plenty of headroom in the future to possibly do some great overclocking. On release day with everything new, the drivers and all that stuff new, I'm not gonna bring the overclocking to the table because you guys all know as the drivers develop and everything around this you know, just gets better, the card's going to get faster, the overclocking's gonna get better. So I'm gonna wait at least a week or two before I do my overclocking. But if you don't have a video card out there whatsoever, you're a solid AMD fan, this thing does come to market at cheaper than the RX 480. RX 40, we're seeing it like 269. This card sells for underneath that for damn sure. So if you're just jumping into the market for a card, I'd say this is an excellent card. Now, if you already own an RX 480, will I go out and just dump that card and jump into this card? I really don't think I would. For one thing, like I said a second ago, I'm really not too happy with how much power this, <laughs> this thing needs. Taking almost as much power as a 1080 Ti, which is a card that's literally like almost twice as fast, that to me is a little bit crazy. You only need a single pin for the 1060. You only need a single pin for the 480. So that's my opinion, folks. Like usual, we'll have all the information about this card down below that like button. Hopefully you guys like this video. So all in all, there it is, folks. At the end of the day, the refresh is what it is. It's a refresh. I know it's not what you were looking for. It's not really what I was expecting either, but hey, AMD's got to do something until Vega gets here, right? So peace out, my tech brothers and sisters.